also on this topic. We are now joined for live also from Tokyo, Ed Rogers, CEO of Rogers Investment Advisors. Talking about the Japanese economy, first of all, welcome to the show. Uh, let's get right into it. The yen is lower against most major currencies, the U.S. dollar and the euro as well. That's helped a lot of exporters in Japan. But the bigger question is, is this momentum sustainable? Uh, good morning, Phil. Th thanks very much for having me on the show. It's great to be here. Um, is this sustainable? Yes, we absolutely think so. Uh, in fact, when you, when you look at the, the dollar yen exchange rate, uh, we don't think it's a one-to-one -one relationship that one uh, yen decrease equals an X amount of profit increase. Uh, we think there's a multiplier effect. The multiplier effect comes from eventually companies paying workers more and a, and a more broadly based uh, sense of confidence in the economy and where the economy is going. So, uh, yes, we, we think that, that the 30%, for example, uh, uptick we've seen in the stock exchange over the last couple of months, that's sustainable. That's really a, a view, if you will, on the part of the, the, the man on the street sometimes uh, that things are going in a positive direction now, Ed, regardless you, you, of Ed, what you mentioned this the markets, GDP number tells us. The, the Nikkei is up over 30% from the bottoms. And, and given many markets around the world are also up that much as well, but investors have very long-term memories in this particular case because Japan has failed to sort of reach that point of sustainability and every time it gets close to breaking out in terms of growth something else appears again and we talk about additional stimulus. Are we done talking about stimulus or is more needed? I, I don't think we're done talking about stimulus. I think that the GDP number being a disappointment in a way that's going to be even more positive in the medium and, 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 and long term because the need for government action is clear, and I think that no matter who the candidate is, whoever replaces uh, Shirakawa-san as the head of the BOJ, we have very pro-growth candidates. All of the candidates are pro-growth. You know, Abenomics, if you want to call it that, is clearly centered around stimulation, stimulating the economy, achieving inflation. So I think the government's very serious, and I think that the, the Bank of Japan will be serious about this. So the, the, we think the medium-term outlook is frankly quite rosy. Uh, and that this bad GDP number will be of, of further impetus, frankly, to stimulus. Ed, Ed you, you know this very well around Asia when investors, whether you're in Hong Kong or you're in New York and you talk about investing in Asia, so often it's Asia x Japan. And the reason why is because the growth has lagged for so many years, if not decades. What does this renewed growth in Japan, if what you say is true, what does it mean for the rest of Asia? Well, we think it's positive for the rest of Asia and for the rest of the world. And for many years, honestly, at, at Rogers IA, the, the, the firm I started, our view is that Japan is very much a part of Asia. Um, you know, Japan's largest trading partner in the world has been China since 2004. We're going on almost a decade of this now. So uh, you, you, we've been speaking to Japanese manufacturers that even six or seven years ago, they moved manufacturing plants out of China, where labor was getting expensive, down to Vietnam, for example. So, so Japan Inc., if you will, interfaces with Asia quite a bit, and we think it's a little bit silly to talk about Asia x Japan. Uh, frankly, Japan is a part of the Asia story and will be for decades to come. Ed, I want to ask you about the Japanese economy. Why then are there still so many skeptics about it? I, I know you're bullish, but you know as well as I do there are a lot of skeptics out there. Why do they remain so skeptical? 20 years of disappointment, 20 years of deflation, 20 years of mistakes made, uh, you know, raising rates back in 99, 2000 when we thought a recovery was at hand. Uh, there have been, Japan's the country that everybody loves to hate. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I think there's a certain amount of editorial bias against the Japan success story. Um, you know, things are underreported how positive it is, for example, at Toyota, Honda, you know, the auto numbers. Look at, look at what's going on with the auto sales of Japanese auto producers in China, for example. That's where the growth is. That's where they're going to make significant, significant profits going forward. On a company-by-company -company basis, there are great stories here. There are also failures. I'll, I'll grant you that. And that's why we favor investing through hedge funds, quite honestly, is not right. every story will be a success story here. Ed, I'm afraid we're out of time. Well, thank you for your time on the show. Of course, we will see you again. Thank you again joining us live from Tokyo, Ed Rogers.